Strategy Management Series. Video number 78 Strategy Formulation. Step 6. Strategy Selection, Qualitative Strategic Planning Matrix, QSPM, and Other Frameworks. Welcome back to the Ready MBA series on Strategy Management. In our previous videos, we have been discussing strategy selection, which consists of identifying and selecting courses of action that a company may choose to achieve its strategic intent, mission, vision, and objectives. This is the last episode dedicated to strategy selection and we will cover three powerful approaches for prioritizing and selecting strategies as we move towards the next phase. The Qualitative Strategic Planning Matrix QSPM, the SAFE Framework, and the Industry Life Cycle Matrix. The strategy selection process is an ongoing journey that begins with a detailed analysis, resulting in a list of potential strategies designed to fulfill a company's vision, mission, goals, and strategic intent, while addressing business challenges and opportunities. These strategies stem from an evaluation of current company strategies, alignment with senior management's strategic intent, insights from a SWOT analysis, and considerations from strategic frameworks and generic strategies. In the initial selection phase, which was discussed in our previous episode, the planning team meticulously examines internal consistency, ensuring harmony among goals. They refine and prioritize strategies based on impact, feasibility, and cost-effectiveness. Redundancies are identified and streamlined to simplify the selection process. Next, the team can leverage strategic frameworks to further distill their list of potential strategies. Let's start with the Qualitative Strategic Planning Matrix QSPM, a valuable tool for assessing the relative attractiveness of different strategies. Here's a step-by-step -step guide on executing the QSPM. Step 1. List key external and internal factors. Identify critical external factors, EFs, through an external factor evaluation, FA, analysis, highlighting key opportunities and threats. Identify crucial internal factors, IFs, with an internal factor evaluation, IFE, analysis, focusing on strengths and weaknesses. You can refer to our previous videos number 49 and number 56 for an overview on how to execute the external and internal factor evaluation, FA and IFE analysis. Create a table listing each one of the internal factors, IFs, and external factors, EFs, in the rows. Step 2. Assign weight to each factor. Assign a weight to each internal and external factor, indicating its relative importance. The weights should add up to 1.0, or 100%. Use the same weights defined during the IFE and FA analysis. Step 3. List strategic alternatives. List all the key strategic alternatives that the organization can pursue based on the analyses executed thus far. The strategies should be listed in the table columns. Step 4. Evaluate the attractiveness of each alternative for each factor. Evaluate the attractiveness of each strategy to address each one of the internal and external factors listed. Rate the strategies on a scale of 1 to 4 as follows. 1 equals not attractive, 2 equals somewhat attractive, 3 equals reasonably attractive, and 4 equals highly attractive. By attractive, we mean that one strategy, compared to others, enables the company either to capitalize on strength, improve weakness, exploit the opportunity, or avoid the threat. If the strategy is not applicable to one specific critical EF or IF, just assign a score zero for that strategy and that specific factor. Work row by row, evaluating the strategy against all of the EFs and IFs and rating it according to these principles. Then move to the next strategy in the following column and repeat the process until all of the strategies have been rated against all of the external and internal factors. Step 5. 
Compute the total attractiveness score, TAS, for each strategy. Multiply the ratings of each strategy against each factor by the factor's corresponding weight, calculating the attractiveness score, AS, of each strategy for every one of the internal and external factors. The TAS, total attractiveness score, for a strategy is the sum of all of its attractiveness scores. Calculate the TAS for all strategies. Step 6. Make strategic decisions. Use the QSPM results to make informed decisions. Choose alternatives with the highest total scores for pursuit. This comprehensive process empowers the planning team to prioritize and select strategies aligned with critical success factors, fostering a strategic direction that maximizes attractiveness and potential success. In our exploration of strategy selection frameworks, another useful tool is the SAFE framework emphasizing suitability, acceptability, and feasibility. Suitability assesses how well a strategy aligns with the external environment and the organization's goals. Key questions include whether the strategy exploits opportunities, mitigates threats, and aligns with overarching objectives. Acceptability evaluates stakeholder approval, considering factors like risk level, expected returns, and anticipated reactions. Questions center on whether the strategy is acceptable in terms of risk, return, and stakeholder responses. Feasibility scrutinizes the practicality of implementing the strategy, considering available resources and potential constraints. Key questions focus on the feasibility of implementation with existing financial, human, and technological resources. Each potential strategy is evaluated against these three dimensions by answering related questions. A score of 1 is assigned for each positive response and 0 for each negative response. Total scores are then calculated, guiding the prioritization of strategies. It's important to note that, at this stage, the planning team may not have all the answers with high certainty, but they should critically evaluate each dimension to the best of their ability with available information. This structured approach helps ensure that the selected strategies are not only suitable for the external environment but also acceptable to stakeholders and feasible for implementation. The third framework that we will discuss today is the Industry Life Cycle Matrix, a strategic management tool classifying industries based on their maturity. It was initially proposed by Arthur D. Little and serves as a guide to understand challenges and opportunities at various stages of industry development, helping businesses shape their strategies accordingly. It's crucial to treat it as a benchmark rather than a strict directive, recognizing that industries can undergo changes. Life Cycle Stage Number 1 – Embryonic Stage This phase is marked by low market growth, high technological uncertainty, and limited competition. While there's high profit potential, the risks are substantial. Key strategies involve heavy investment in research and development, market establishment, and customer education. Market leaders focus on rapid growth, intermediaries strive for differentiation, and laggards find niches and try to catch up with the other players. Life Cycle Stage Number 2 – Growth Stage Transitioning to the growth stage, industries experience high market growth, ongoing technological development, and increased standardization. Competition intensifies, but profit margins stabilize. Strategies include expanding market share, optimizing operations, and building brand loyalty. Leaders aim to consolidate positions, intermediaries focus on differentiation, and laggards consider restructuring strategies or seek alliances, mergers or acquisitions. Life Cycle Stage Number 3 – Shakeout Stage Moving from growth to maturity, the shakeout stage is characterized by intense competition and industry consolidation. Market growth slows, weaker players exit, technological uncertainty decreases, and standardized products dominate. Strategy priorities include consolidating market share, cost reduction, and continuous innovation. 
Strong players strengthen their advantages, middle-level players seek alliances, and weak players exit or explore mergers. Life Cycle Stage Number 4, Mature Stage In the mature stage, industries witness slowing market growth, stable or declining technological uncertainty, and intense competition. Profit margins may decline due to increased competitive pressures, and customer interest stabilizes. Strategies revolve around cost efficiency, innovation for differentiation, and exploring new markets. Strong players aim to consolidate through acquisitions, intermediaries seek alliances, and weak players exit or merge. Life Cycle Stage Number 5, Decline Stage The decline stage is characterized by negative market growth and reduced competition as weaker firms exit. Profit margins often decline sharply, and there's a decrease in customer interest and awareness. Strategies should involve cost-cutting, portfolio rationalization, and potential exit strategies. Strong players aim to drive out remaining competitors, exploit market power, and cut unnecessary costs. Intermediary and weaker players seek alliances, mergers, or potential exits. When using the industry lifecycle matrix, the planning team should first understand which are the current and near future stages of their industry. Next, they should identify in which competitive tier their company is currently operating and aspires to operate in the near future, market leader, intermediary or laggard players. Based on the industry stage and company position, the planning team should calibrate, align and prioritize their chosen strategies according to their realities. And that concludes our exploration of the three frameworks designed to aid the strategy selection process. It's important to note that none of these frameworks guarantee 100% correct answers, as strategy selection is inherently contextual. The planning team should exercise good judgment and rely on their collective wisdom in making informed choices. Additionally, strategy formulation is an iterative process. If, at a later stage, the team realizes they may have prematurely dismissed a valid strategy, they have the flexibility to revisit and reintegrate it into consideration. Strategy selection, above all, is a prioritization effort. Given the limitations of resources and the impossibility of pursuing every conceivable path, companies must focus their efforts. The discussed techniques should be viewed as facilitators, guiding the team toward a concentrated and strategic focus. Thank you for joining us. In our next video, we will kick off the discussions about the seventh step in the strategy formulation process, strategy evaluation. Be sure to tune in. Until then, keep strategizing.